What's up guys, Drew here. Uh, let me apologize in advance. I'm sick, I'm sure you can hear that. I think this is the first time I've ever recorded sick, actually. I don't get sick often, and when I do, it typically doesn't last long. But here we are. Um, I have been sick all week. As a matter of fact, it's Friday. And this is only the second time, I think, on my channel in the two years I've been up here that I've recorded on Friday, edited and uploaded on Friday. I really apologize for my voice. <laughs> it's terrible. I just felt so bad the rest of the week. I just kind of started feeling better yesterday. I usually like to record earlier in the week, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. I'm gonna grab my water. <laughs> I have lots of tissues and I will edit out any sneezing or nose blowing that happens. I won't subject you to that. Seeing as I'm not feeling great, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, I actually don't have any super set plans for my videos right now. I'm gonna get into that a little bit, but I thought I've had a few questions on my channel um, in the, <laughs> I couldn't think of what it's called, in the comment section. Um, and I usually try to answer those immediately if I can, but sometimes it's easier in this format than typing out. So I really hope this isn't boring for you guys because it's gonna be kind of a rambly chit chat video. I'm just gonna be talking to you guys. But recently I posted, my altar tour video and i had a couple of questions or requests under that video um, one of which was about the mirrors a couple of my viewers asked what i do with my mirror other than scrying or <clears throat> using it in like rebound magic stuff like that so <laughs> it's very simple it's really not complicated at all but it's kind of an exercise to get you out of it's kind of for altered states. Essentially, the idea is that you go out, preferably into nature, where there's going to be a lot going on in the background behind you, and you sit and you look at whatever's going on behind you through the mirror. And the idea is to just really examine, like I'm looking at my staff right now that's behind me, and I'm seeing the peacock feather and the crystal. And obviously, if it were out in nature, it would be a different thing. Um, than looking specifically at my staff. You know, there'd be a lot of foliage and whatever, and just a lot going on. And it's sort of like getting into a, a meditative state. You know, you, um, you're focusing on this, and so the other thoughts are sort of leaving, or even more importantly, there's the possibility that these really interesting, weird thoughts are popping into your brain. Things that you might not normally think. It's a way of connecting with nature. It's a way of looking at the world from outside yourself, if that makes sense, from a different perspective than your normal right on eye level vision or whatever. Um, and yeah, you're supposed to just sort of sit with it and see what comes up, what thoughts come up or, you know, what messages you might get if you, if you get messages, you know, um, what have you. It's it, like I said, it's a really simple thing. So I didn't want to make a whole video just about that to answer it, but it also wasn't something that I thought would be easy for me to articulate just typing it out. So there's one of the questions answered. I hope, I hope that makes sense to everybody. And here I am, Rudolph. Okay. <clears throat> Another question under that video was about my Santa Morte shrine. They asked if I would be willing to show it, and I am absolutely willing to show it, but I'm gonna do that in a second. I'm gonna talk about some things first because it's part of my studio, and I felt like I just rearranged my studio. My husband and I just rearranged it like a week or two ago, um, and it's totally different, so I think I'll do a quick little studio tour. I haven't done that in a while. Nothing real in depth, but just, you know, kind of show you what it's looking like now and some cool stuff that is going on in here. But before that, let's chat a bit more. I'll end the video with that in case you're not interested in that and you don't have to watch. I jotted down a few things. I'm really not with it today. <laughs> I've had to pause this video twice already to go out. Like I had to go out and get the mirror because I forgot I didn't have it on me because it's on the altar this month. And then I had to go out and get these because I forgot that I was going to talk about them as well. Um, and now I need to sneeze. So that's going to happen. So on one of my video other videos, and I don't even remember what video it was now. Uh, it must have been the altar tour. Yeah, it had to have been the altar tour. Someone expressed an interest in the pagan prayer beads. So, I mean, they just said they were interested in them. So I'm just going to talk about them for a minute. So this one is the one that was made for me by Erica of Ross Spirit. She made it specifically for me. 
Um, we talked about it on the phone. She was actually in Michael's, like showing me like, ooh, do you like this, this, this? What kind of stuff do you like? We chose this agate bead <clears throat> to be the main bead because I really like like tree agate and moss agate are two of my favorite. I mean, I have a lot of favorites, but <laughs> let's face it. Um, and then she suggested maybe this little tiger's eye because she wanted a smaller bead. And I thought that would be great. Look at that bead. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh. And then the little skulls, because, you know, I said to her, I want it specifically for ancestor work. So there's this little bird skull, which obviously birds are significant to me um, for a couple reasons. My spirit animal. And then there is a large bird that hangs out that's also associated with the goddess that has come to me. And then, of course, a pentacle, because, you know, who doesn't love their pentacles if they're witchy? Um, you know, earth, air, fire, water, spirit, all that's important. And then wings, again, bird-like, but this is also skeletal, so, you know, the ancestors. Now, she has nine of the large beads on here, and then I'm sure everything else just sort of falls into place with that. I think that those are the significant beads and the significant number. My husband, I made him... And I had my own, like, um, this is full, this little vial is full of iron filings. I made this for him last Yule, and there's a heart on there. Um, I use lava beads and Amazonite beads because that's what I felt drawn to in, in that moment. And for me, honestly, what was important in this one was that there were clusters of three um, throughout, throughout it. And then secondary, there are nine Amazonite beads here and nine Amazonite beads here because threes and nines are important in our spiritual path. And I assume that that's the thinking behind the nine on Erica's as well, that nine is a significant number. I mean, there are any, any number could be significant to you and you could use that when making or purchasing. I have seen that other people make pagan prayer beads and sell them online. Erica does not sell them. She'll usually work it out in a trade or it's a gift or something like that. But hers are beautiful. I love them. I, I think hers is far superior to mine <laughs> that I made my husband. But it's the thought that counts. And I wanted his to be very different than mine. So, yeah. I'm, I don't know what other information to give. Um, for me, part, like, these are always sitting and charging under the shelf that is the main section of my ancestor altar on my working altar. And, you know, if I just want to feel really close to them, work with them, meditate with them, I will hold this, use this. Um, when she first gave it to me, I just carried it around all the time, honestly. It has great energy. I love it. Um, but yeah, normally it's sort of, um, it's a soothing thing that gets me in a, in a space, in a space I want to be in while working with the ancestors. Five times now I've left this room. The last time I forgot to write down something that I wanted to say, um, need to know it specifically. And then I left my tissues out there when I went out there. So I had to go back out and get my tissues just now because I'm having a, se a sneezing fit. It's horrible. Oh, <sighs> what was I saying before I had my sneeze attack? <clears throat> That's right. I'm sure, you know, I will talk about some of the things on my journey with this new relationship I'm having with goddess. Um, I definitely want to talk about the sort of shifts that have happened in my life over this past year, over 2019, there have been some really big moves. Um, when I look back, I can see it started before this year. But I mean, in general, I think I'll talk about some of the things that I have changed in order to sort of become a better steward of the planet in my own way, the way that I have done this, what that looks like. Um, I have started in my real life because I feel like that's where I can make the biggest, most important change. And when I say real life, I mean, I've started outside of my magical practice um, because I feel like, like I said, there's so much I can do in my personal mundane life that I have done and that I'm going to continue to do to change, to be better. And that I feel will bleed into my magic life. I feel like I'll probably talk about that on my channel in the coming year. And then of course, I feel like I'm always participating in the community. So whether that's through tags or VRs or just being inspired by someone else's video and even going in a totally different direction, talking about things that are going on, giving my two cents as it were, um, <laughs> on things happening in the community, I know that that will continue to happen because 
there are times where I don't say anything because I just don't feel that I have anything to add or that it wouldn't be helpful. And then there are other times where I just can't help myself and I have to say something. And lastly, what I want to say before I give you all a quick little tour of the new digs is thank you. Um, you know, up until a thousand, I was really keeping track of how many subscribers I had and I was doing giveaways and, you know, I stopped doing that because you can't just do a giveaway every 100 subscribers after a while because there comes a point where you start to get them very quickly <laughs> and it's just too much. Um, and that even happens before a thousand usually, but I guess it depends on the channel, but that's my experience. And so I haven't been, you know, saying thank you every time I get 100 subscribers. And here we are at, I think um, this morning, it's 1,587. So almost 1,600. That's that's huge. I think that's huge. I know it's not huge, but, but for me, it's huge. For YouTube, it's not huge. But And so I just want to say thank you so much to all my new subscribers and to all my sort of ride or dies who have been here from day one or day one-ish. I find a lot of joy in doing my videos and connecting with all of you and interacting in the comments and through videos. And I've made some wonderful friendships through this platform and I'm just grateful every day for it. And so I'm really grateful for you. Thank you so much. And you know, I can't, I love a giveaway. So maybe when we get to 2000, maybe I'll do one. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know, but since I got to a thousand, I've been trying to focus on like witchy love mail and stuff. And I honestly haven't even done a lot of that, but a couple, I've got one coming up. I'm sending out to, to a witch and you don't know who you are, but you'll find out. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's everything that I wanted to say really. Okay. So here is the door that we come in and there's my witch's ladder right there. And all you can see is my finger. Okay. So we have Yoda. He's always been there. My youngest gave him to me years ago. This is my prosperity, which is ladder that lives here in the studio. Cause this is where our business lives. This is my cane. Um, I have back problems, chronic, uh, I have a birth defect. So sometimes I need a cane. Uh, fortunately that doesn't even happen every single year, but several times in my adult life I have needed a cane. And when our, um, our cherry blossom tree died after the hurricane, we cut her up. One of the th ways that I used her was to make a cane and, you know, a sort of Jack skeleton head. I still need to finish the bottom, but whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> so my herbs live over here. Here's some little work surfaces. Oh, that's my, my staff. I love my staff. I have a couple, but that's, that's, that's big mama. Well, big daddy, I think. Um, my best son lives here on the side of my conjuring cabinet and more herbs. Oh, more herbs here and herbs up here. Um, I did change up the bottom here a bit on um, my drink and this tissue don't normally live here. I got this candle idea from, I can't remember what her handle is on YouTube, but no, not YouTube, um, Instagram, but I follow a witch on Instagram and she had a setup kind of like this and I loved it because my candles are usually hiding away and this way I can just grab them when I want and they're pretty out. So more herbs and you know, good stuff. These are smudge sticks here that Trish from Beanbag Hagwag sent me. I've got my goddess tray and my goddess, my earth goddess up there. Tree goddess, really. Um, here is a beautiful mermaid picture from Trish as well. Uh, she had a giveaway and I won it. The bookshelf lives here now. Um, I was making natural garland. So there's cranberries and cinnamon and little things I made. Here is my original staff. The very first staff I ever made. This is where I hang my pendants that I make wire wrapped or polymer clay. And here's where we start the Santa Morte. Now this is where my resins live, but here is a rock that was painted for me to represent Santa Morte. Okay. And that was painted for me by Dana, who was Lady Lucy, but um, now is the Shadow Moon Witch. This is my favorite candle with, you know, Day of the Dead characters, the man and the woman, eternal love. And it is there to represent Santa Morte. Now I did not... Let me put it this way. This shrine did not start out as a shrine. Like I had certain elements as they are, 
but when we rearranged, I just brought all of the Santa Morte elements together. So it just kind of formed that way. Um, it was intentional and not intentional at the same time, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, of course, here is Jana, who was Artemis Nightingale here on YouTube, passed away a year ago. This is my soul sister who gave me the name She Who Walks Between the Worlds, who passed away several years ago, and my mother who passed away many years ago. Here, um, this is a necklace that was my mother's. My daughter made this for me at a Samhain party, oh my gosh, probably in 2007, maybe 2008. That um, It was a party that we had at the shop I worked at. We would have something every Samhain. This is, all right, this is where it gets a little, so for me, uh, Santa Morte is obviously her own being, her own entity, whatever you want to call her, her own thing. But I do feel this weird mingling of her and Our Lady of Guadalupe. They, the energy to me is very similar. <clears throat> this mothering, loving energy. Um, and for me, Santa Morte is basically just the representation of death. A physical representation of death, the one who takes you, what have you. So <clears throat> this is sort of a mingling of the two, really. It's a skeletal Mary. Uh, and uh, for me, it's, it's a, a mixture of Santa Morte and Guadalupe. Okay, and up top. Oh, goodness. I'm going to get a stool. All right, for me to really show, I need to stand on a stool. Um, I keep... Our graveyard dirt up here, it needs to be dusted. <laughs> ah. um, my little skeleton um, candle holders live up here. My favorite skull, my fluorite skull, lives up here. This is a beautiful picture that was gifted to me by Trish. Um, and it just seems very fitting, if you ask me, to be here on the, in the space of death, basically. So my Santa Morte shrine, I suppose. Um, I just think this bottle is really lovely. Uh, same with this, is more ornamental than anything. Back here in these two jars is Wisteria. Wisteria has many properties, but I do also sort of associate it with death and mediumship and things of that nature. Um, there's Guadalupe there. And this is just a big silver urn that has always lived on this shelf. Many of these things lived on this shelf before I even made it into this sort of shrine area. Um, and then there's this lantern. You can put a candle in it. And I thought it used to live on the other side, but I thought it went better over here now. These are some silly little tarot cards that my husband got. I think it's Spirit of Halloween, but I kind of like them, so I put them up. This is a curtain. It's actually a altar cloth, really, but uh, Jana gave that to me. I wanted it in a giveaway, I think. Here are my oracle cards. This beautiful box is something that Trish made. Here's my chalice I made on my channel. Crystals, fairies, blah, 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 mortar and pestle, all kinds of stuff. And here I keep product, mostly. Things to make product with. Uh, this is the tray that I bake my polymer with. This is my work table where I make all my candles. Here's my recipe box and you know, just, you know, wicks for making candles. That's what I melt my wax in. Um, some pretty herbs. This is, I keep product here. Mm, that's my tobacco and graveyard dirt. That's the Morgan. A little plaque of the Morgan. Up here, this is a piece of artwork a friend made for me and it is my birth chart and here is my zodiac sign made for me by Dana under here I keep oh gosh all kinds of things backstock of herbs there's candles my labels for our product more stashy stuff for <laughs> polymer and what have you there's some herbs up here and I keep my altar charms on that shelf up top. Oh my goodness. These are smoke cleansing wands that I have made from herbs in my yard. Up top, I've got some, I've got all kinds of stuff up there. Oh my gosh. Um, it's just a storage space, really. This is where my tarot cards and some of my oracles live. Um, I actually only own, I own three tarot decks. The rest are all oracle. Here are my most referenced books, my desk. I make all my polymer stuff. That's, you know, my clay conditioner. This right here is actually a dock 
and a speaker for my iPad because I will often watch fellow witches on YouTube while I'm working or I may watch a tutorial depending on what I'm trying to do. So there's tools and polymer tools and pens and just all kinds of goodies up in here. My little magnifier, my lamp, because I need better lighting when I'm working sometimes. This is my, <laughs> this is my arm, for a camera for, for my phone, arm for my phone for when I film. Up top here are my mother oils. There's just a very small amount of oil in the bottles that serves as a mother oil and I add more as I need to and that's for my business. Although I think I'm going to be changing my oils. Of course, this guy here, um, I made at, I think, Bialtine on my channel. These right here are, it's a bunch of ribbon. Well, ribbon isn't the right word. It's like twine, colored twine. If the witch ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And if it ain't the truth, uh, my wand lives up there. My husband got that for me at Michael's. And over here is my dresser. I keep everything. Oh my gosh. Uh, tape and ribbon and twine and bottles and just boxes anything lots of stuff for product and stuff for just my own crafting purposes and this white cabinet in the bottom i have some beeswax candles and my husband has some of his candles down here these are crystals all kinds of stuff like in this drawer is you know fabrics this drawer has tools this drawer has candle holders and little dishes my some crystal books and just paper and uh, you know cardstock and these are the crystals i give away when people order here are candle molds and there's some jars back there on top of the dresser i have my business cards i love our new business cards <clears throat> i've got a little place for hanuman here some product and crystals more product just stuff brother eagle um yeah, all kinds of stuff. I love this. This is new. This is where I now keep um, all my bottled stuff for the shop. Um, I haven't filled it up yet, but I don't, I mean, I don't necessarily need to. I may go ahead and put empties up there until I fill them because they're all in here. And that'll give me room, more room in the dresser, but I don't know. There's my small singing bowl. This is our prosperity altar here in the studio. It kind of extends up the wall. Up top is my besom. It's, it's just for show. It's just a pretty cool witchy thing. I did make it myself. I made my other one that I actually use myself too, but. And above the door it says creations from the hollow and there is a horseshoe. And yeah, that's it. You've seen it. All right, guys, you got the tour of the new space and I hope this chatty rambly video wasn't too boring um <laughs> i think i'm gonna do some tag videos I'm, i haven't i haven't been doing tag videos i don't know um we'll see what shakes out but i just honestly haven't been feeling the greatest so i just felt like just chilling and hanging out so if you hung out with me thank you so much and until next time much love and gratitude